So I'm Izan Ruiz. I'm a South African trained neurologist. I've come across to Melbourne and the Royal Melbourne Hospital and the, UNIS, the Clinical Outcome Research Unit, headed by Thomas Klinsik, to do my PhD in outcomes related research relating multiple sclerosis. Um, I felt that this would be a great unit to join because it is a leader in its field when it comes to outcomes research, as well as producing high quality research that is widely disseminated and widely used. Fantastic. So that's obviously a big journey to have come across from, from South Africa to Melbourne. How are you finding Melbourne so far? I'm really enjoying Melbourne. It's a beautiful city. It's very multicultural. And I think what is great is that it doesn't feel that foreign or that different from home. Um, we're working in a great unit with wonderful people who are very supportive. So I think the transition has been much easier than I anticipated. Obviously, the hard thing is always being far away from family and your support networks. But with technology, that does get a bit easier. It's a little bit easier, yeah. So how long have you been in, in Melbourne now? I came across at the end of January and I started my PhD in the beginning of Feb. Okay. So it's coming on six months. Okay, fantastic. And so the, the PhD project that you're talking about, can you explain to us a little bit about what that project's looking into? So we're utilising the MS Base cohort, which is a very large international cohort that follows up patients longitudinally with multiple sclerosis. It's a great cohort to use because it is international and probably the la it is the largest international cohort we have for multiple sclerosis. What my project aims to answer is whether or not there is a delayed onset of first visible efficacy in different treatments of multiple sclerosis. And once we've identified a way in which to find this onset of action, we'll need to determine what are the different patient and disease characteristics that determine this delayed onset to action. This is a useful question because it allows us to personalize medicine in our patients with multiple sclerosis, which is becoming increasingly important as we have more therapeutic options available. It's also becoming increasingly important because what may occur and what we are finding is that Patients with progressive disease may have benefit in particularly the higher efficacy treatments for, for multiple sclerosis. And that perhaps if we take some of this therapeutic lag or a delay to onset of eff efficacy into account, that, these pa that there is an observed benefit of treatment. And that's obviously important because at the moment... Um, there's always been this held belief that these therapies don't benefit people with progressive MS. Is that, that correct? Absolutely. And before the recent trials with Siponimod and Ocrelizumab, there was the belief that our patients with progressive forms of disease might not be eligible or benefit from treatment. So what we envisage to establish is how long the delay to onset of effect is, how this differs in patients with different disease phenotypes. And if we apply this, we'll be able to identify a benefit easier. Um, this will be useful even in clinical trial design because that will help patient, people to determine how long a trial needs to continue before determining whether or not a treatment is effective. Okay. Well, it sounds like amazing research um, and really important research that's going to have a, a huge benefit on people's lives. Um, for people who might be listening, what's a, what's a daily sort of routine for you in terms of your research? Like, like what do you do during the day um, to actually accomplish these goals? Can you give us a bit of an insight into that? Well, basically, it's more broken up into a week-to-week -week task. Mm -hmm. And we do have weekly research meetings in order to direct our plan based on what we've accomplished in the week before. I think it's really important to set specific goals for each day as determined by what you need to accomplish by the end of the week just to ensure you get to that point. Mm -hmm. As to what every day entails is pretty much self-determined. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, 
there is a degree of clinical work also involved mm -hmm. in, in each week's program, which helps me to stay in touch with the patients mm -hmm. and the people we want to, at the end of the day, help with this research. And that really does help me to keep things in perspective. Okay, fantastic. And so looking at the, I guess, more so in terms of how you go about answering the question, um, and, and you mentioned using MS base, um, can you just sort of explain a little bit in terms of, of how that works? So you've got all of this clinical data that's there, and so is, is the research mostly looking through this clinical data and try, trying to analyse the patterns that you see in that? So absolutely. The MS base data, it gives us a large amount of data that we need to work with and we usually start off by working through it and determining which are the most eligible patients with the longest follow-up to include. We then go on to try and identify the point at which treatment efficacy is first determined and that's where we, we're currently paced with our research at the moment to try and identify the first visible point of treatment efficacy. That is proving to be a journey in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And so just for people who may not understand that term, can you just explain treatment efficacy? So the first point at which treatment becomes clinically effective is either in affecting the relapse rate, so a change in their previous relapse rate after treatment is started, or secondly, a change in their disability scores. Okay. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Um, good luck with the rest of the PhD. Continue to enjoy life in Melbourne. Um, and we hope to hear from you soon later in your research. Absolutely, and I hope to share my positive results with you.